Come on. Hello. Welcome, Welcome back. back. It's a beautiful day. It really is. It's a fun day, too. It really is. Before we tell you what we're doing today, let's check in with our zones. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've decided we need a new zone color. <laughs> what color do we need? Purple. Uh, oh. 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 Like mixing red and blue? No. Oh. Distracted. <laughs> oh. Distracted's not on there. Well, you notice, Mrs. Wally, that the yellow zone, the little character is Mr. Nervous. He's purple. He is purple. But oh. see, there's nothing on there that says distracted because I'm not tired or bored. I'm not moving slowly. I'm definitely not focused. And I'm definitely not silly or wiggly. I'm just distracted. Hmm. I think if I remember my zones training correctly, Distracted fits under yellow. Oh. I just feel like it, but it doesn't fit for me for yellow because I'm not anxious or worried or like, ah, my thoughts aren't racing. It has to do with the amount of energy. But it's right? not taking me a lot of energy. I'm just distracted. I'm green. Like I'm, my brain's yeah. calm and I'm just yeah. thinking about things other than what I'm supposed to be thinking about. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> anyway, let's do... Should we do a statue? Ooh, how are you going to act out distracted? Oh, fun. I know. <laughs> you ready? I'm going to count down from three to zero, and you have to do a freeze frame, and we have to guess how you're feeling. Mine's not going to be that difficult to guess, but it's still part of the process. So you're going to act it out and see if people around you can figure mm -hmm. it out, and you're going to see if you can figure out our zone. You ready? Three, two, one, zero. Oh, Mr. Kevin, uh, are you confused? <gasps> no, I was just being silly because I'm in the green yellow. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think you're, you were in the green earlier. I think you're tipping to the yellow zone. I'm tipping to the yellow. Did you yellow. see how I did distract it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> so that's, that's yours? Your, yeah, your <laughs> very distracted. Miss Oslin, I think you're green. Yeah, I'm good to go. I guess right. I'm not, because no one's distracting <laughs> you with say, my feet. <laughs> <laughs> one of us I'm going to try really hard. One of us is in I, good shape. Miss right? Oslin's feet were hurting, so she's, it's okay. I'm good. Uh, I can focus. Can I focus. can do this. Brain, you can focus. You can. Positive uh, self-talk. I love that. Yes. Important. Shall we review our three personal standards, especially because we're going to be outside the TV classroom? On a field trip. Yeah. We agree to? Show, show respect. respect. Make, make good decisions, decisions and solve problems. problems. And one way we show respect here on the TV classroom is by honoring our indigenous lands and peoples. Now, what exactly are indigenous lands and peoples? Well, those are the people who came before the settlers. The people who lived here mm -hmm. to begin with. Yes. For a really, 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 like 20,000 years long time. Yes. And the land that they lived on. Yes. And kept beautiful. Took care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to honor those people by look outside your window look at the sky the trees your surroundings our physical space stands on the ancestral and historical lands of the puyallup tribe of indians we acknowledge the puyallup tribe of indians community their elders both past and present as well as future generations we make this acknowledgement as part of our work to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and white supremacy or unjust treatment Unjust treatment, what mm -hmm. is that? It's when we're treating someone not fairly. Mm. So unfair, unjust. And there are groups of people that do that and the settlers did that. Mm -hmm. So we're identifying that that happened. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge it. It happened and we're gonna try really hard to never do that again. Mm -hmm. And take the space here in our lesson to learn about it, to pause, talk about it, think about it, feel about it and learn about it. Mm -hmm. It's important it because is. when we know better, we do better. That's right. All right. Oh, our scientific process. Ooh. We've been making observations, asking questions. We did some reading. A Seed is the Start is the book that we read. Today, we're going to talk to an expert. We are. We're going to gather more data, interpret some observations. Yep, we're doing that today. We might pro not, we might probably we will probably be revising our thinking as we learn new things. We have to change what we yes, thought we knew. because 
we've just been talking about seeds. Seeds and plants. Mm -hmm. We're going to make some connections today. But it's not just seeds, my friends. No. Then we're going to get to a point where we learn more, but we start to satisfy some curiosities. Mm -hmm. We'll do some of that on this field trip. Mm -hmm. Answer some questions. Mm -hmm. And then probably learn some more. And we're going to learn how a gardener solves yes. everyday problems yes. in really interesting ways. Thinking about our essential question, which is how do seed structures help them disperse? And it's more than seeds. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn how do plant structures help them disperse? Mm. Because seeds are part of the plant. Interesting. And, mm, mm, I don't want to give it away. All right. We need to review Mr. Gavin. Yes, we do need to review <laughs> our big science word. We learned that to disperse That's is right. to spread in a wide area. A botanist is a scientist who studies plants. And germinate means to start or cause to start to grow or sprout. Now, we're not going to see a botanist on our field trip. We're going to see a gardener. Yes. But this gardener relies on the botanist and their information. Yes. For sure. We're going to learn some new science words so that we're prepared for our field trip. Okay. A bulb. Like mm. a light bulb? That's what I said. What does it mean? It's a plant bud that begins to grow underground. And we're going to see some examples today. Ooh. Tulips grow from bulbs. They do. This is what some bulbs look like. Oh. Mm. Ooh, these are different kinds, mm -hmm. like the hyacinth bulb, the daffodil bulb, a tulip bulb. I have iris bulbs mm -hmm. and I have lily bulbs in my garden. Yes. Corm. corm. Not corn. Mm -mm. Corm. And on our field trip, we're going to learn how important it is to know what consonants you're saying. So I said corn? Like, was that a typo, Ms. Oslin? Nope. Nope. It's a thickened underground stem. The crocus's corm stores new leafy shoots. It's true. And they can look like this. They can mm -hmm. also look other ways too. Mm -hmm. They look lots and lots of different ways. This is a fun word to say. Mm. Tuber. Tuber, like a tuba. Oh. Dun, 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 I was dun, thinking dun, like dun, a tube-like plant. Oh, you had mm. a really great idea. Because I was thinking about plants, right? Mm -hmm. An underground stem that is short, thick, and round. Like a tube. Yes, Mr. Kevin? I was thinking of YouTube. Oh, a YouTuber. Like a, TV. a YouTuber. <laughs> like the tube. They could have these. Mm -hmm. Potatoes are tubers. Oh, they are tubers. They're an underground stem that is short, thick, and round. So are dahlias. They're my favorite plant. Here's some examples of tubers. Those are dahlia tubers. Ah. I have lots of those in my garden bed. Maybe too many. So if potatoes a tuber mm -hmm. and a dahlia is, can you eat dahlias like no. potatoes? No. I mean, I don't know if they're edible. I wouldn't. They wouldn't yeah. taste very good. No. They're definitely not um, potato-like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have one more word. Rhizome. Oh. Hmm. Like a shape? Yeah, like a rhombus or a... Mm -mm. It's an underground horizontal stem that shoots along its upper surface. A horizontal stem. And underground. And shoots come up. <laughs> and we're going to learn... Why wow, you need to be careful with those kinds of plants on this field trip. The rhizome enables the plant to survive an unfavorable season. Mm. This is what a rhizome might look like. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if ivy that climbs up buildings, is that a rhizome? Oh, might be. It's difficult to get rid Some of. Some trees are rhizomes. Like, I don't know, like holly trees. We have a, oh. our neighbor has a holly tree. And then all of a sudden we'll get a little holly plant coming up and another little holly plant because they have rhizomes mm. that carry on their roots. Ivy is also, or holly and ivy are both very difficult to get rid of. And if you don't pull mm. the full rhizome, it will just propagate mm. faster. Yep. Comes right back. Huh? You have to get rid of the whole thing. Otherwise you're in trouble. Okay. Or botanist boogaloo. Here we go. I'm, I'm a botanist, botanist and I'm here to say seeds are important to you every day. I study all seeds and how they grow, how they move and what they need are things I know. Floating, flying, and flipping too, doing the botanist boogaloo. Hey, that was the best we've ever done. 
pretty good. I'm in a very toony mood today. Okay. Re quickly review. Yes, Just we can take a moment field to look at our input chart. We've been learning about different types of seed dispersal. Dispersal to spread in a wide area. We're going to learn more about that on our field trip. R. We have found an amazing gardener. Yes. Why don't you tell us where we're going? We are going to Little Women's Garden, oh. which is my friend, Lindsay the farmer, flower farmer. Mm -hmm. And she invited us to her flower garden or mini farm. She's turning it into a flower farm to sell yes. flowers to make money for her family. Yes. And she loves flowers. And she's going to take us through the whole process of what she does and show us all around and see some really cool plants. It is. It's really neat. And it's right in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. And her daughters help. Yes. It's pretty wonderful. It is. So when you are watching, think about our essential questions. How do plant structures help them disperse? Because we're not just learning about seeds. No. We're going to learn about using our new vocabulary mm -hmm. words too. And before we get going, you need to get out your journal or your piece of paper or your whiteboard because you need to write down some things that you observed mm -hmm. because we're scientists after all. So in your journal, you're going, we're going to do a four box note, Love four it. things you observed or noticed or learned on our field trip, things that stick out to you. And there you go. One thing in each box, a sketch and words are required. Ooh, I like it in each box. What are things that you've learned? What's something that's interesting to you? What's something you want to try? What's something you want to look into more? What changed your thinking? Or what new questions do you have? And when we come back, you can send it to us here at our TV classroom. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin's going to remind you of the two ways that you can send us your thinking. You caught Mr. Kevin having a snack. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all need to eat. That's all right, you, Mr. Kevin. You know, it, it started when we said potato. And, <laughs> and then you wanted french fries? <laughs> Are you eating tubers up there? No, I'm not eating tubers. <laughs> but send us something, students, to TV Classroom <laughs> at tacoma.k12.wa.us. You can always send it to... Uh, um, send something in the mail mm -hmm. uh, to TV Classroom at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. All right, Thank let's head over to Kevin. the flower farm, shall we? Let's go. We will see you there, Tacoma. Bye. Hi, friends. We made it. Can you believe it? I'm so excited to be at a flower farm. It's beautiful here. I'm so excited to learn. Me too. So I want to introduce you to Lindsay, the flower farmer. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, ladies. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. Yes, I'm glad you're here. I am Lindsay of Little Women Gardens, and I actually have three of my four little women here. This is my oldest, Bentley, and then Emery and Lane. And they are students just like you. And they're going to help us learn about flowers today. Yes, they are. So. Here is where the magic happens underneath the soil and on top of the soil. Amazing. Where should we start? Well, actually, I think we should start in the greenhouse because that's where things start small and then they get big. Okay, let's go there. We'll see you there, friends. Hi there. Okay, so there are a couple different things that happen underneath the soil. There are five different ways that plants start out and you're probably familiar with one of them. So there are things called seeds, right? They're the itty bitty ones. And I think it's pretty cool, you want to hold out your hand, Emery, that seeds actually start out in different shapes and sizes. So this one is called calendula, and they look like little curly worms. They're really funny. You probably wouldn't even think it was a seed if you saw it on the ground. Um, and this one is actually a stalk seed, and it is, looks a little bit more like a seed. But look how different that one looks. So different. And what I love about seeds, they're just like people. Different shapes and sizes and colors, and they all produce beautiful flowers. So there are seeds. Seeds are one way that flowers begin. There's also, put that in there, babe. There's also a different way. You might be familiar with this. This is called a tuber. You actually eat tubers. You probably know that this is a potato, but right now these are called eyes and they are coming up. If I planted this in the dirt, I'd have a potato plant 
in probably a few short weeks. I highly recommend planting a potato because it's very rewarding. You'll feel like a master gardener because they grow fast and they grow big and tall. And then they have little beautiful purple flowers, but underneath the soil, you'll get like 20 of these. You need to give a lot of room to a potato plant. So this is a tuber. You can plant this in the ground, but also tubers. You can make your own French fries. Yes, Whoa. you can. We made the mistake at my house last year of planting too many potatoes in a garden bed. <laughs> I'm still finding them. <laughs> there you go. Lessons learned. This is also a tuber. This is called a dahlia tuber. And this one, you can already see that what this eye is doing right here, this one is definitely growing up. Oh, Basically, yeah. this says, please put me in the dirt, Lindsay. I should have been in the dirt a long time ago. <laughs> So I'll be potting this up later today. So yes, that's a tuber. So seeds, tubers. We also have something called a rhizome. Do you know who likes to be rhizome? Our weeds. This is a weed. So they're all connected. See that? They just kind of keep going and plant comes up and a plant comes up. Oh, wow. The thing with rhizomes is if you're, if you're weeding and you break one off, it's like, woohoo, I'm gonna get bigger and crazier. So these things are super insane to get rid of. You have to dig them out. So you wanna not break them off. You wanna dig them out. You wanna, you wanna, wanna out. dig them out, mm -hmm. okay? So if you're weeding for your mom or dad or whomever, don't break them off. You'll get a lot more. That's a rhizome. Okay, another one is called a bulb. You might recognize these. They're just this cute little teardrop package with the hairy little roots right here and the top right here. This is where the flower comes up out of the soil. So this goes down maybe four inches or so and the flower comes up, the stem comes up and that flowers out of the soil like that. That's a bulb. So tulips, daffodils, things like that. They're bulbs. And lastly, I just dug this up for you this morning. This is called, well, this is a ranunculus plant, but they come from corms and they look like octopus. So you can kind of see right here, these beefy little arms, and there's a bunch of them. They're like a little octopus like this, and the hairs come off the end, and then they flower up here out of the soil. And you plant them maybe an inch or two below the surface. Wow. Pretty amazing. Okay. So we've got corms, rhizomes, Emery, you wanna hold up some of these? Bulbs. Tubers, tubers, and then of course, the little seeds, right? Shake them in here. So that is really fun. And I had something amazing happen this morning. What? what? Okay, so I came in here to get everything ready for you today. And in this very thing right here, see how this is covered? Mm -hmm. Seeds like to do something called germinate. Ooh, where we they, learned that word. Mm -hmm. Yes, they get ready underneath the mm -hmm. soil and you wanna keep them very moist and warm. So we put this little hood on it to help them germinate. Well, I came in this morning to see if any had germinated yet and look, look at this little guy right here. That's a zinnia. And the first leaves are called a cotyledon. We call them cots. And they are not the true leaves just yet, but they're the leaves that get all the, the sun. They say, bring on the sun. So it's sitting right there and it's gathering all the sun for the rest of the plant. Now, if you look over here, you can even see these are called cosmos. And look, the seed is still sitting on this cot leaf right here. It hasn't even fallen off yet. And then these are the true leaves that they're finally growing up. So these, these mimic the parent plant a lot more. But these cot leaves, these first leaves, are just the ones that kind of gather all the sun in the beginning. And they actually end up dying back. But look. The seed pot is still sitting there. Keep Isn't that funny? Real close on that. Yeah. <laughs> and the seed pot's sitting on this one too, on that cot leaf. That's so cool. Isn't that amazing? How do those little plants know how to do all that? It's just part of their nature. It's amazing. You have so, so many different kinds of plants in here. I nice. do. It feels like one big, huge experiment, really. Yeah, that's what's so great about it. So I end up leaving these little hoods on, this little germination hood on, until about half of the tray is germinated. Mm. 
and then I take it off and let the sunshine do the rest. Yep. Awesome. Why mm -hmm. would you choose to start seeds in a tray in a greenhouse as opposed to just planting them in the in the ground? So you can start them earlier when you're in a oh. greenhouse. Yes. So you can kind of get a jump on the season, it's called. Okay. And then you can bring them outside. Once it warms up outside. Exactly. Okay. Now zinnias, they're very hardy. You can put them outside. They're very happy. And there's some right behind Emery here. These are called queen lime zinnias. And they get really big, really fast, as you can see. Mm -hmm. These are like, actually, I'm too big for this tray. Please put me in the ground. <laughs> and actually, here, I'll show you. I'll kind of squeeze it like this. You can see. Look at that. Oh, look at all those oh, roots. Wow. It's already growing. You know, this has only been in here for, let me see my, my date here. 422. This has been less than a month. Look at all that growth. Oh, wow. So friends, she's amazed that it's grown that month, that much in less than a month. So what does that tell you about flowers? Do they grow <laughs> fast or slow? What do you think? I'm thinking slow. Slow. I think it takes some time. It takes patient. some time, but so rewarding. Because this is going to make a big green flower about this big with this beautiful pink center. It's so pretty. And it's going to be tall like this. Mm hmm. Amazing. Where should we go next? To go out to the garden. Let's go out to the garden. Yes. Out to the garden. OK, so we actually just had some ladybugs come land on my daughters here. Emery and Bentley have some ladybugs which is awesome. We actually want ladybugs in the garden because they, what do they do girls? They eat aphids. They eat aphids. They eat the bad bugs in the garden that eat the flowers. And my daughter Emery made this ladybug house. You can too. These are just wow. cut up bamboo and some scrap wood that we have. They like to come in here and, and just live in the little crevices. We plan on hanging this up on the garden fence here so that we'll invite them in. Oh, and actually, cool. you can go to garden centers and buy ladybugs to release in your garden. And it's recommended to release in the cool of the day, either in the morning or the evening, so that they stay. If you release them in the sunshine, they'll fly away. OK, so we have a special flower that I grow here called, I'll tell you the name in a moment. This is the special flower. It's a beautiful flower. It has a very unique center, and it opens and shuts in the morning. It opens for the light and it shuts in the evening. And this is what it's called. But the name sounds very similar to a sea creature you might be aware of. So it's a bit of a tongue twister. So Lane, would you like to share with us the name of this flower? Anemone. Can you say it one more time? Anemone. Yes. And then Emery, what is the name of the sea creature you might all be familiar with? The sea anemone. Uh-huh. <laughs> Should we do that one more time? Uh -huh. Listen really closely. Anemone. Say it again, Aunt Lane. Anemone. Anemone. Say so it again, Lane. Anemone is the flower. Anemone is the flower. Anemone is the sea creature. Anemone. Good. Anemone. Very good. Okay, at home, I want you to try it. Ready? <laughs> Say the sea creature. Anemone. Say the flower. Anemone. Very good. Got it. <laughs> That's hard when you can't see my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. The first one, the flower has a anemone. Yeah, we wrote it like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's look at it. Look. Anemone. Anemone. <laughs> So the M and the N switch places. Yes. I bet people say it wrong all the time. They do. I bet. Yes. Thanks. That was awesome. That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to enter the garden. The funny thing about my garden is there's no gate. So it keeps out not only deer and bunnies, but people too. Just kidding. <laughs> Currently, this is how I enter. It is eight feet tall. And you'll notice that um so deer can jump over seven feet sometimes oh. even seven and a half feet so this is eight feet up here because we have a lot of deer here mm -hmm. which we we get to see them when they're babies 
and then they grow up. Mm -hmm. So we've named them year after year. We've had Siri, Alexa, <laughs> Gerald, Hydrangea. I love the names. Cleopatra. Bambi, Cleopatra. Lots, lots of deer here. You ever see one girls and say, oh dear. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. Mr. Kevin. <laughs> yes. Um, and then you'll see there right here, we actually have to keep the bunnies out because bunnies love to eat plants. So we have a foot that comes out like this so that if they try to dig, they hit the fencing right here. So deer up here, bunnies down here. And squirrels. And squirrels and whoever else wants to eat all of my plants. So right now, before my gate happens, I just curl this back and I just Scooch in like this. <laughs> Ta-da! There you go. Welcome to my garden. <laughs> Welcome in, friends. So I noticed something about your garden. Yes. I noticed that you have all these hills of dirt all around and then is that where your plants are? And then you just kind of let it natural in between them? Not on purpose, but yes. Oh, I thought so, maybe there was a reason. So currently you'll see where there's some wood uh, chips. Mm -hmm. That is the plan for all the pathways. Oh, I love it. Yes. So right now there's a cardboard. So cardboard is a great mulch and great weed barrier. So we've been saving a ton of cardboard. I can bring you some cardboard. Excellent. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. So you lay down the cardboard on your pathways mm -hmm. and then you put wood mulch on top of it and that keeps all of the and that weeds keeps the down, weed down. Mm -hmm. and then next year like it kind of like mulches down and creates kind of almost like a compost really oh. and you can kind of keep doing that year after year and it keeps the weeds down so you can see i did that much so far it was great so eventually so um it'll be all throughout all the pathways right now the pathways look like grass that hasn't been mowed eh. you know because it takes time this is not my full-time job. No. How do you know the difference between what is a weed and what is a flower? <gasps> oh, that's yeah. a really good question, Ms. Oslin, because I don't know. Did you hear it, Mr. Kevin? No, you need to get the mic closer. How do you know the difference between a weed and a flower that you want? It's called paying attention. I'm having that problem in my garden. Yes. Okay. So you mark it. You want to mark the area. You plant that seed, you better put a marker right there. Yeah, I didn't do any of that this year, friends. Yes. And then you watch it. So say so you kind of like keep looking for it, like looking for it. So I also document keeping a garden right. journal is a really good thing to do. I made sure. So for example, I'll show you this one. So I did a bed which was direct seeded. So direct seeded means you actually put it straight into the garden. When you sow seeds, like in the greenhouse, you actually like you put them into cells, and you know mm -hmm. exactly what that plant is. Right. You put it in the garden. You don't know what that could be a weed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'll show you a bed that I direct seeded over here so each of my girls got to choose their favorite flower to pick for the garden and emery actually her favorite flower that she chose was a earl gray larkspur it's a kind of a lavender color larkspur and this is her her choice and i had to watch it i did not never planted larkspur before but it looks like a carrot, basically. Mm -hmm. I was, this fluffy little I was going to ask if it was a carrot. <laughs> it's not, but it looks like this. Now, because I know it looks like this, I know that this is a weed. And I'm going to yank that out of there. And I definitely know that this is a weed. I'm going to yank that out. So we kind of just watched it. And as they kind of grew up, I said, oh, that's a weed. And now I know that even though this is tiny, that's definitely a larkspur mm -hmm. because those true leaves look the same. Mm -hmm. So I know to come by and I can weed that one out of there but this actually looks a lot like my snapdragons but i would i know that that's not a larkspur so i know it's not I can get rid of that get rid of that this is probably a bulb planted by a squirrel there's a bulb way down there somewhere so yeah but this is nice and happy and these i planted these way back in march to talk about being patient and waiting. This yeah. is about two and a half months of growth. Wow. And look though, look how rewarding this is. This is called a sweet sultan. And look at that gorgeous bud. It almost looks like a dinosaur egg or something. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Very vibrant green. Yes. And it's going to turn into this white frilly bloom. 
I've never grown it before, but it's fun. I'm trying it out and I just flicked an ant off of this leaf. Speaking of pests, I've got another one here. And this netting, um, sometimes you put netting on your beds and you kind of raise it up to help the stems go upright oh. so they don't flop oh. over. So certain varieties want to have the nets. Um, in this bed, I used it actually to space my plants to make it a lot easier than trying to measure. Oh. Like a grid. Like a grid. Math is involved, kids. <laughs> Even in gardening. It's all connected. I it's didn't use connected. math and I wish I would have because now I have some plants that are too close. I didn't plan very well. I just <laughs> threw it all in the soil. <laughs> you didn't? That's shocking. <laughs> Yes, math is a good thing. So that was a, this bed that we did and I am so happy with how it turned out because it's so fun to watch these gorgeous things come to life. Wow. Yes. Well, Even the weeds. And, and so, they, they do look happy. They don't do. they? They do. They're literally smiling. <laughs> so behind here, I have 65 sweet pea plants. Ooh, they're going to grow up along the fence. And you can eat them, but they're also super fragrant. And I planted them here on purpose. So they just be this wall of oh, color yes. and fragrance. And the girls helped me seed those into trays. You soak them overnight so that they start to plump mm -hmm. up. And you put them in the cells. And then we just, we seeded those, I think, back in, gosh, February. Yeah. Ooh. And the cutest thing, so sweet peas are so cute. Um, they will, they, they're, these little tendrils will like grab the fence mm -hmm. and curl. Nice oh. right there. So I think there's some, if we walk down here a little bit more, you'll get to see them because the, um, yeah, they're a little bit bigger. Look at oh, this. Oh yeah. Look at that. See, they hug, they hug the things that they're trying to climb. Look at that. And they're just the cutest. That's neat. Isn't that amazing? So they hug like, oh, thank you. I'm climbing up. As they grow, will they let that go? Oh no, and they keep climbing. It, leaves, it stays there. It and stays it there. Up. And so oh. this will continue to grow up and then more tendrils will come and climb. And these eventually, they'll sometimes grab onto themselves and they'll, and they'll wow. kind of keep climbing up. What an amazing structure that it has to help it survive. Yes. Isn't that amazing? So you just made yeah. me think of something. Bean poles, right? So so these are, these are sweet peas, they're not beans, but Beans use the pole and they grab onto that and they grow. Yes. So this is a similar. Exactly. Yep. Same idea for exactly. And and some people grow them on like teepees too, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. When these go to seed, they make a little pod. Yes, with they the do. seeds in it, but you don't want to eat that pod. You can. Can you, you could. eat it? Oh, oh. yeah. yeah. And you can also let them crack and open and they'll. So this is an example of a plant that will crack open and release its own seeds. Mm. It's an annual and then it'll just self seed itself or you can harvest that pod, let it dry, and then save it for an extra and plant them wherever you want. Yes, or sometimes the birds will grab the seeds and they'll oh. plant them wherever they want, mm -hmm. or right. they'll just eat them. So that happens too. <laughs> and that brings me to something too. So squirrels, animals, people, the wind, they're all, they all plant things as well. Mm -hmm. We learned water does too. Ooh, if it, yes, if it's a plant so. by a river, mm -hmm. then it'll carry it. That makes sense. Yeah. Also that. Yep. Okay. What else do I have here? So this is a bed full of asters. These are an amazing flower. They'll be about, I don't know, this tall and they have a big fluffy bloom. I just love them and they'll last a long time in the vase. Um, these are called straw flowers. Oh my goodness. I wish I had one to show you because when you touch them, they literally feel like straw oh. and they sound like it like hard oh, and they're a great dried flower. So I plan on saving them to make wreaths in the fall. These look like weeds, but they're not. <laughs> I figured they weren't, but right? I was curious. But you would wonder because of what, what they look like. It's called um, status. Again, it's another great dried flower and it also feels papery. Like in the 1980s, like my mom had, you know, status mm -hmm. on the wall in like, you know, everywhere in her house. That was there for years, gathering dust. <laughs> um, this is called Queen Anne's Lace. There's another version that's poisonous. This is the non-poisonous version. It's great for um, bouquets. 
And then we have some more of this. You can't see it yet, but this is another place where I direct seeded. So there are seeds underneath the soil that I keep watered that will come up. There's some bachelor button over there. And I see your little markings. I see your, li yes, your little markers. Yes, my tags. So I know, and it's, it's fading. I better be careful. This is Queen Anne's Lace 225. So there you go. Is, um, is, and then behind you, I do have some vegetables. It's kind of fun oh, to see. look at that. Yes, this is a, um, uh, I think this is, which one is this? A cassette squash. Look at that. So the funny thing about it is they flower. And then as the flower dies back, the fruit or the vegetable starts to come. So that is a squash. Isn't that cool looking? And then we have some peppers over here coming up. And I have one lowly tomato plant. <laughs> My father-in-law is the tomato man of the family. So I just have one. I get so many tomatoes from him, but I've got one flower coming. So wherever you see a flower, that's where the fruit is going to grow. The flower comes first. So there will be a happy little tomato coming out of that flower later. That's exciting. And then this, my Lane, her one request was she wanted a, she wanted to walk through a tunnel of sunflowers. <laughs> so that's what this is going to be right here. Tunnel of sunflowers. The tunnel of sunflowers. So they are right along here. We just planted them and they will grow up big, like way up here. And the ones along the back are called honey bears and they are basically yellow and fluffy. They're not typical. They're just all fluff. So they're called, yeah, golden honey bears. How fun. Isn't that fun? It's amazing how many different kinds of plants there are in one type of plant. Yes. That's something I've noticed lately when I've been researching is that a sun, not all sunflowers are equal or the same. They're mm. all different, but they're all beautiful, but they all have different structures that help them survive in different ways. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you plant each bed homogenous? So like all the same flower, as opposed to alternating all in the same row? I do just because it makes it easier for harvesting. Oh. Cause it's like they, I harvest them all the same way rather than different heights or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Um, and then seasonally. So like sunflowers are fall um, and same with these. And then the ones over there are more spring. So like I can turn those beds and be done with those beds. And then this will happen later. So, so you're, you're, yeah. your garden kind of goes from front to back when you harvest. That's the plan. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, I thought I'd show you guys a particular flower. This is called a bearded iris. And this stem is, gosh, probably three feet tall. And they are so intricate. And you can see all the beautiful veining. And look at this like fluffy featheriness going on here. And these bearded iris come in all different shapes and sizes. They're just a fantastic. What I think is really interesting is they bloom in succession. So the first bloom opens. And when that dies back, the next bloom opens and that dies back in the next and then the next and they bloom down the stem. Okay. So these are called alliums, which most um, onions, garlic, things like that, they grow like this with this beautiful flower at the top, but the onion and garlic is down below the soil, but they make these beautiful flowers. Isn't that so fun? And they look like firecrackers just amazing and then look at this crazy thing right here but once that thing falls off you'll see it's got these beautiful florets oops i just love them that's awesome and you say firecracker because it looks like a firecracker that just exploded right it really does yes and they just keep expanding they get like kind of this ball shape isn't that amazing and the individual flowers are called florets Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this curling thing right here. This one is actually curling around the other one. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Looks like a little hat. Huh. I'm zooming in on that curl. That is fun. Yeah. All right, so this, look at this crazy, this is a 
poppy plant. It looks almost prehistoric, like it should belong when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. But this thing is about three feet tall, and it grew here because we harvested poppies that grew in this area last year, and some of the seeds just fell because they're tiny and they do that. And it started to grow, and I was like, well, we'll just let it grow, it's fine. And you know, we got all that snow. Well, it, it's still here. It didn't even matter. Everything else is covered in snow. And that was a lot of snow. It was. That was a lot of snow. But look at this. It just grew up. And now I've got these crazy buds coming. Um, and there's one growing out of the rock. Yeah. And, and look, <laughs> this little, here, here he is. They're very He's still resilient. There. They're very resilient. And actually, so they grow like this. They kind of put oh. their heads down right before they're going to bloom. Their heads pop up like this and they look at to this, they look up and then they kind of crack with color and then they open. And wow. that's, you know, right before they're going to open, but that's a poppy. Okay. So this is how the anemones grow. Remember anemone, that's the flower. So this is how they grow and they start off on the ground. Look at this. They have their little heads are just down like this. I'm trying to see another one down here. And you're kind of like, wait, what's going on down here? And they just have to put their little heads down and they slowly grow up. Their heads are still down and they start to turn their heads up. And they have these things called collarettes. And when they have this space in between here, it says, it's time to pick me. And you can cut them down here and you can put them in a bouquet. And then during the day, they'll start to open and reveal the color inside. And then at night, they close up more. So if it was sunny right now, they'd probably be more open. So that right sounds like a structure closed. that they have that helps them to survive the cold and grow. Probably. Yes. It's pretty amazing how our plants are alive. Yes. They really are. They move and they go with the sun. There's Mr. <laughs> 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 it's amazing how different plants do different things to survive and grow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's the anemone for you. Anemone. 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 Okay, friend. Wow. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. This we was so amazing. Much. Yay, you're welcome. Friends, I hope you had a good time learning. And it's time for our affirmation. What are we going to say, Miss Osman? I see, I see joy all around me in nature. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. I, I see, see joy all around me in nature. nature. Thanks, Tacoma. We'll see you next time. Good day, young aviators. Did you know that we live in an amazing state? Not only is Washington famous for its spectacular scenery, but did you know that Washington State is famous for making airplanes? So today, we will be using our arms, 
muscular strength to fly around Washington State and see how beautiful it is. All you have to do is put your arms out when the bald eagle takes off from her totem pole and keep them flapping until she makes it back to her totem pole safely. Now, your arms might get a little tired, but that's okay. That's how we build our muscular endurance. Don't stop flapping until you land. Have a great flight.